Welcome back to the Real Low Show podcast. We got a treat for you today, but before we get into the show, please like, comment, subscribe, even give us a dislike, share with others. We want to continue to grow our channel and obviously for other people to see it. But today we're talking about sports cards, bringing in tip from Cards from the Basement, giving us his expertise. Here we go. I never had to tell my dogs that we on roof for greatness. They pay for kiddies, they want money more than they want fame shit. I swear we go so hard, we on A list. I see my niggas prevailing. We going hard for the hand, we gonna stack till we jaded. I just told my niggas that we on a mission. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's gonna be hard to get it. We too on par for the missus. What's up, everyone? Thank you for listening to The Real O Show. If you're watching on YouTube, thank you. If you're watching on any of our audio platforms, we do appreciate it. Also, leave us a review, like, share with others if they do like it. It's gonna be a little different than what we normally talk about here, so don't wanna to talk too much, but we're talking sports cards today. Obviously, we have tip from Cards from the Basement, and obviously, we have the Real O Show here as well. Um, let's get it off. What are sports cards? I mean, that's kind of a great question. I think it might be a little self-explanatory, you know? It's a <laughs> card, trading card of a sport, an athlete, a team, but it's, you know, um, something that kids all the way up to adults uh, all take part in. You know, you can go to your local grocery store, Target. You can go to your local card shop, go get a pack of trading cards, rip them open and uh, have some fun. Try and find some some exciting young players or maybe your favorite player, favorite team. And like I said, get in on, on the action. For sure. For sure. I mean, I obviously me and Joshua had sports cards growing up. We really did enjoy them. Um, I remember when I was like eight or nine years old, I stole like two pack of Yu-Gi-Oh cards from <laughs> Meyer, and then and then mom made me go return them. <laughs> well, shout out Terry for she making me go return them. She caught me them. before I went in the car. I remember that actually. But yeah, but yeah that's funny that you say that because <laughs> I wanted really, the Yu-Gi-Oh cards and mom wouldn't buy them for me. So I, that was I really the them. thought behind like the naming of my channel, like cards from the basement, because I feel like everyone, you know, myself included, like you just said, you guys everyone had cards growing up and like you can go find cards in your basement right now that you know might be worth something to somebody for sure and obviously i'm a huge gary v fan and he is as tip would say the godfather of sports cards i i truly believe so he's been doing it for a long time and there was a clip of him that just went viral of him just getting shown uh, sports cards, oh. blanked out names, blanked out teams, and they were quizzing him, and he was just getting that on the spot. <laughs> he really is the guy that's really uh, led the charge uh, for its uh, resurfacing and its mania sure. that's really going on right now throughout sure. the pandemic and, and post-pandemic. For sure. I mean, it definitely went away for, you know, a decade or two. COVID right. definitely brought it out. COVID brought a lot of things out as well, but um, no, I, I, I guess the way... I would want to take it after this is why are sports cards valuable um, in a sense? Like what makes a sports card valuable? A certain one that's worth a thousand dollars compared to one that's worth nothing. What would be the difference there? Well, I think the biggest thing that people should know is that rookie cards drive the market. Rookie cards are going to be almost all the time the most uh, profitable cards to get into. You know, there's uh, special like renditions, parallels, numbered cards, whatever, but rookie cards are the are the most valuable. So, um, I totally actually forgot like, the question <laughs> when I was going to take that. No, what, why are sports cards valuable? Like why what makes cards, one a thousand dollars compared you know, to nothing? I, I think really like it comes down to, that just click on, check that. It, it, it really comes down to people being fans of teams and players in sports. Uh, like Gary V says, uh, for people that are into sports cards or trading cards, uh, you have to find uh, ones that you're passionate about, certain players, certain teams. Uh, like you talked about, some people are into Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon, yeah. uh, Fortnite has trading cards. Gary V has his own trading cards with Fee Friends. So uh, there's a lot of markets out there, and I feel like those markets hold you know, passionate people and people that are willing to pay extra for you know things that they can use to express themselves certain types of cards certain types of players myself uh i love to buy joel Embiid cards you know that's my favorite player so um and then too like it it's a form of art almost you know the yeah, rookie cards each year are kind of like a limited release of you know tomorrow's stars and guys you know you want that like first image of 
Joel Embiid in the Sixers uniform. Sure. I feel like sports cards are like the mixture of art and gambling because it's like it's almost in the it's sense paid. it's in the sense of if you think about it because you want you're talking about like rookie cards drive the market and I think yeah. the re- one it's their first it's the first edition Time. of them yeah. right yeah. that they're in the pros so like it's the first card that obviously it adds value but it's like the mania of rookie card is getting picking the guy when he is a rookie yeah. and then holding on to it or quick flipping it after right. a good year whatever whatever right. your thing is but I think it is the the gambling anarch because obviously it's like it's cool you know there's a certain level of investing that almost goes on right for, sure. like, for me a couple of guys that I'm heavily invested into like Trey Young I think that Trey Young has a very bright future in the NBA I think that the way that Steph Curry has changed the game I think the way that kids look at Steph Curry now are going to look at Trey Young like that in five to six years time you think um, Trey Young's going to be like Steph Curry? I mean, just the way that he shoots the ball. If you go to a YMCA right now, like you're seeing kids try and hit 45 footers. And who does that other Steph than like Curry. Steph, Trey Young, you know, Luka Doncic sometimes. But that's the way the game's going. It's I exciting. Feel, Chicks feel, dig the long ball. I'm not, I'm not going to lie to you. I feel Facts. like the biggest guy, I feel like LaMelo has the younger generation Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like Lamelo Lamelo's swag. That's what I'm saying. I feel like he has like the swagger, but it's like the ball family in general. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean. No doubt. Like they have the name. Lamelo's gonna be hot forever yeah, for sure. That's but why I'm glad to, you're a big Lamelo guy. I am a big Lamelo guy. But for people out there, you know, that want to know why it's it's uh, profitable or why there's so much money going around in it, I would just say it's because. People just like their sports teams or other hobbies or other things like Yu-Gi-Oh or Pokemon. People are passionate about it and are willing sure. to, you know, pay for it. It's also it's also the collectible factor is also that just is kind of a human thing is they like to collect things mm-hmm. things they're passionate about. I also think it is a little bit of investing. Yeah, you know, sure. obviously Gary Vee talks about it all the time. It's pretty much an investment. He likes doing stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I also, obviously, I really do agree that it is about sports teams. It's the passion fans. Fans are crazy for their sports team for certain players. Right. Obviously, when it's in the NBA, it's you more so love a player than a team. Obviously, I, I'm, a, I'm a LeBron fan, so I'm a mm-hmm. Lakers fan. I'm a Cleveland fan. Right. I'm a Heat fan. Right. You know, obviously, but I do like the Pistons as well. So obviously, and you, have, even, and you have a Cade card. I would as even well. say too, like through that, like you know, then. You get things where if you're such a LeBron fan, right? Like maybe you don't have a ton of LeBron like rookie cars, but maybe you start buying like uh, maybe you get you know a card when he's on Cleveland the first time. Then you get a first year Miami card. Then you get a card for when he came back to Cleveland. Then you get a first year LA card, and like I would I would think that like that's a cool impressive collection. That's you a know? really cool. One. And then you collection. find other LeBron fans out there that also think that and are maybe willing to. You know, exchange that or pay for it. What are rookie LeBron cards going for? Oh man, oh, I that's a lot that I wouldn't even know. We found one like million in our basement. So like, no, no, there was there was the 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 big like, Le- top shot. Had the big like, I know, but the big LeBron thing, like the big LeBron card, was the patches, and that's what like Drake was trying to find. Ended up some little the kid patches. finding it. It was the it was his patch from Cleveland, Miami, and L.A. Mm. It was like all in one card. All in one card. It was like That's the patch right. card. Okay. And that went for a couple million bucks, I thought. But like there was a bunch of people trying to get that card. That's sick. Like Drake was one of them. I, don't, I mean, okay, hey, I don't that if you're card. watching on YouTube, um, you know, maybe we'll insert some LeBron rookie yeah. prices right here, you know, but uh, I would have to think that a LeBron like PSA 9 or 10 rookie would be going for a couple thousand dollars. I, it okay. definitely depends on the card company as well, because mm-hmm. we found, I found a LeBron rookie card that I had as a kid, and when I looked it up, it was like maybe less than a hundred bucks. Mm-hmm. Okay. They but, but, and, but I mean, you know, in some comparisons, right? Less than a hundred bucks, but two, like it's a lot of money, you know, that's a lot of money for a single piece of cardboard for sure. Right? sure. When you think no. about it. So, so, and it was um, priceless to me. So right. I, I wasn't going to, it was a very cool moment when we found that. Yeah, and like, that we was. were all, we were all like very shocked. We also so. remembered that. I mean, me and Joshua, Throughout our childhood, probably threw away thousands of dollars of like. I remember, t- like, I used to have Pokemon, I used to Yu-Gi-Oh, have a giant uh, binder of like baseball cards yeah. back in the day. Well, I mean, you know, and that's another thing I think that we should talk about. If you do have a binder, 
it might not be worth the paper it's printed on. Right. It might. Yeah. It's I mean, so because we found that out too. A lot of the things that you're sure. gonna find out, or people that get in this hobby find out, is that most of the cards aren't really worth anything. You yeah. know, um, unless they're rare or, or called parallels. So this is my question then, because this creates the big point and kind of the the gambling factor that I was alluding to earlier. Is it better to buy a pack at the store and rip it? Or is it better to just go on eBay, find who you like, try to try to get some good deals on some guys you think are undervalued? Like, where is the value? Because obviously the high side is you could buy a $10 pack and get a $200 right. card. I right. think that that's the experience. I want you to go into that, but I'm going to give you my genuine insight because I think that's a really good question. I would say going to the store to get a pack, get a pack is like you have that excitement, like, oh, what if? When you're online on eBay searching for it, like you kind of know what you're looking it's for. More you're looking, it's more calculated. It's more calculated. That's more investing. For sure. Whereas, Whereas I feel like the, the lottery taxes, it's, 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 it's that's what it is. So lottery from ticket. from someone who's been on both sides of it, right? I've done my fair share of ripping you know, sealed wax, as we call them, the hobby pack. <laughs> um, or, you sealed know, gold, wax? Yeah, sealed wax is what it's called. I'm ripping you know. a pack of sealed wax? Yeah, that's like, you know, box cu boxes come in like cellophane and then, you know, you it's, like break it okay. open and all that okay. other I stuff. I got you, actually. You know. Didn't want to deep, deep hobby guy here. Um, <laughs> or I've been on eBay, you know, bidding wars, buying cars, trying to find good deals, good prices. I would say, honestly, in my experience, like it's eBay because you know what you're getting. Like you can... You can find trending valuable cards without having to, you know, go through 60, 90, 120 cards before you find one that's actually maybe worth the sixty dollars that you just spent in uh, in ripping open packs. So, but at the same time too, I was just on a hunt for a John Morant card for a few months, and it seemed like every time I found one. I would get outbid by somebody or just wouldn't like work out for me. So, you know, it's hard to go on eBay too and really find the cards that you want sometimes. It's, it's, it's definitely hard both ways. I just, I think going to the store and getting a pack, to me, that was like our childhood. Whereas if you go to the it store, you rip it. It's an experience it's just, and it's fun. You it's know, an, it's, it's fun it to fun. rip it open and go through the pack and try and see and find if you, you know, hit a big guard. For sure. Maybe find one of your favorite players. I mean, you know, you can find some cool cards in there anyways. There's a lot of cool cards that I like that I have in my collection that, you know, just somebody else may not be worth anything, but I like them. I like looking at them. Yeah. You know, it's, a, it's that art factor as well. For sure. For sure. And you also want to, like, collect, you know, just cool players, even if, like, the card actually doesn't it's cool. actually have any value. It's just cool to, have, to like, rip a open player. a yeah. pack and get a LeBron card. Yeah. You know, like no matter what year, whatever, like it's cool to get a LeBron card. Yeah. And I think the way we kind of wanted to take this at the end, and this is kind of scaling it from the conversation we had, is the difference between, not the difference, or I guess where the future of sports cards are going. We're probably going to go on like NFT, um, blockchain, NBA Top Shot already has, you know, digital trading cards. Um, you know, I went on and bought one pack before. Yep. Um, yep. I bought a pack of NBA Top yeah, Shot as well. You know, it, I, I think that's pretty cool. I do think that, but I also, there's just something about the sports card is the physical. Well, I feel like, is gonna I, feel like I kind of have an interesting story about the whole NFT NBA Top Shot thing. The reason that I even got into sports cards in the first place was because I was this close to paying $300 for a Joel Embiid, uh, NFT from this season, like NBA Top Shot, NBA Top Shot, yeah. And I was talking to, I talked to you, I talked to Kevin, and then Kevin ended up telling me that he had a friend that works for Gary V, and he talked to his friend about how I was this close to buying an NBA Top Shot, and his friend told him, "Tell your friend to buy like a physical, actual card." Yeah. So then from that moment on, I started buying Joel and B cards, and then the rest is really history. So, you know, I. I, sorry to cut you off. I think the physical is important right now because as we move forward, I think everything's going to go online. It's it, it's more logistical for the companies because it costs money to print, package, ship, all those things. They can be completely erased by doing it fully digital. And I think that only makes the physical cards worth more money. And I think that we talked about this because we were like, yeah. well, what happens if I want that physical card because right. but I bought you, it online. But you bought it online. And I we discussed it for a lot of things and we kind of were on the same page. 
but I actually was listening to Gary V and someone else talk on it. Um, who's really big on Web3, and I don't want to mess with his name, so yeah. I'm not going to say it. Might have been like Kevin Rose, maybe? Maybe, but they were, they were talking about how, because we had discussed this, and yes. this, was, this was what I was alluding to, yeah. but what it is, is how it's going to work. It's just going to be on the blockchain. You're not going to get the physical card, but if you do want the physical card, say, you know, Tip sells me a Kobe Bryant rookie card from the blockchain, I buy it, I'm like, I'm, I want this for myself. I think then that's when they send you the card, but the NFT itself gets burned because once the physical card gets printed and sent to you, you there's a there's a human factor of it's it's it could get messed up. But then could, here's my thing. Here's my thing, and that's and that's makes sense. What happens if it gets can they make a new Kobe Bryant NFT card then? I th and, like can and, they make another? Like that's talked, my thing with it, where it's like once you burn it, they can you bring it back. Or they talked. They, they talked about that a little bit about how they could essentially take a card that was like, say, so for example, there's like the the, the Pokemon Illustrator card that mm -hmm. Logan Paul just bought. Right. There's only one. Like a necklace on it. There's only one PSA ten in the whole world because. That card was only to people that actually helped design some of the things, like some of the cards. Mm -hmm. Like they got handed the illustrator cards because they were part of it. And there was only like sixty of them. Yeah. So there was only sixty of them, and there's they all like most like only like thirty of them got PSA'd, and one of them was a ten. So he went and got the ten. But it's like if an NFT world, you know, all say all those were gone. I mean, essentially, they could. So okay, it. because uh, I wanna I wanna kind of I mean, give they my write two rules. thoughts on the They're, NFT versus the cards, but great. then my one thought that I have right now is like, how can we judge between a PSA eight, six, seven, and a PSA ten when it's a digital NFT? I think that that's where I think that is where the game kind of gets interesting, right? Because I think that that's where they kind of go into it, and this is just speculation. I'm not. This isn't what I know, but I'm a, I'm speculating that they only do like, hey, we're gonna do 500 of these cards. We're only gonna yeah. do like 20 of them at PSA 10, and they already and have they, it they already have it performed. That and would then, make sense. So like, you might pull LeBron rookie card, but it's only a PSA six. Yeah. So it's like, it, yeah, it's a nice card, but I think that's how it has to be because then it creates that same or it's unnumbered. Be, or it's right. unnumbered because like I think that allows the market to be created. Like you right. have to create it, and that's why. I think it's kind of cool in the sense of if all say all these like Jordan rookie cards were gone and they re, like they reprinted it. It's I like, think they should be able. To I think it's them. cool, but I also think that the reprint should have the asterisk and not be worth obviously as much as an original because it, for sure. But that just makes it. It's kind of like again the Pokemon like one first edition and it's a second edition or third, whatever it is. But everything after the first edition is less valuable. I, I agree with that. I agree with that because I that's what I said. I was like you know you want to have. You know the best LeBron James card ever created, always in circulation. Like you always want it, but then you were like, "Well, it kind of loses the value if you can continue to reprint it." You know, which obviously devalues it. But I do like the asterisk idea, which is like, "All right, if this one was worth two million dollars, well, this one's got an asterisk. It's probably worth you know one point six million dollars." Instead, it's just like it, it can kind of come down. Yeah. And it does have the uh, asterisk, numbers, but you relative. do, but you want it in the market is why I think. Digital makes sense, and then if you want the physical, you get sent the physical. Right. You know, burn. for me, like the sense. biggest thing between the NFT and physical sports card is one rarity is what drives the market. Having things numbered out of 500, 250, 99, whatever. That's what ultimately drives the market. The rarity of rookie cards being only limited prints of that year. Um, so if you know, the NFTs, like an NBA Top Shot, they do that sort of thing where it's base or unlimited print or out of, you know, 299 or whatever. I definitely see the appeal. Or like I said, I was this close to buying a $300 Joel Embiid NFT because I thought it was sick to have me the, be the owner on the blockchain, have this highlight from what I thought was going to be his MVP season and be able to be able to forever show that, right? But then there's always going to be a market for people who want that tactile feel of the cardboard of the card in for the sure. hand. So I think, yes, I agree with you that it's going to raise the value of cards that you can actually hold in your hand. And I think that even though the NFT market will evolve, physical cards are never going to go away. I, I agree. I a hundred percent agree. I think they're just going to be in a limited printing. Here's my question. Which we, will make it more rare and up yes. the value more. So yeah, a hundred percent. 
a question I want to ask because you kind of brought up number and we kind of discussed this a little bit today. I thought it was interesting. Could you explain to people why the numbering matters? And if so, what numbers do matter, if any at all? So no, all cards are technically numbered. Like if you look on the back of a card that you could rip out of a pack, it'll have a number. And that basically is just the, the print number, the set number, whatever. But cards that have like a stamp, a metallic, like silver stamp, where it's on the front or the back and it'll say like three out of 99. That's what's called serialed in the, in the hobby or, you know, those are like numbered cards. And those are rare because they're usually like different colors than, you know, the regular cards, the base cards, as we would say, they're have different effects, whatever. Um, and then, you know, any serial number is more valuable than the regular card. But then for example, if you have a Justin Herbert 10 out of 99, it ups the value more because Justin Herbert wears number 10. So if you have the player's number as the serial number, then it ups the value. Same with like, you know, if there was a LeBron Lakers 23 out of 250, you know, his Jersey or six now, you know, too. So, um, other than that, like, there is value that it's numbered, but I think you had asked me the other day, like, if it's one out of 99, like, does that add any true yeah. value to it? And the answer is no, just only if it's, like, now LaMelo Ball, one out of 99, because he wears number one. Makes sense. Makes yeah, sense. and that may, that's interesting because, like we discussed, we would have thought maybe the one would have value, but... Yeah. Well, and then, again, it gets back to the limited print, the rarity, the demand, right? Like, they make thousands of these Joel Embiid base cards, but then they make 99 of the same card, but the background's blue, you know? So it drives that demand, it drives that uh, rarity of the of the product. Yeah, got it, got it. Anything, anything else? I think that's, that's a good... I think that was a good... I think that's, that's a good, good description on, like, the basics of cards, because, I mean... I've only learned so much because yeah. I've been working with Tim. Yeah. I, so. I would like to keep talking about like the digital and physical. But I think that's kind of a conversation for another time because that's kind of taking it to a different level with people having I, to understand the NFTs and everything. I would like to finish it up and challenge both of you as well as anyone listening. Go out and buy a card of your favorite player. It doesn't have to be a rookie card. Just you know, find a card, search it up, find a card that you like of a sport, of a player, of a team of a Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon, whatever, Fortnite, go out and just, you know, buy a card. It can be like a 99 that. cent card, can be a $10 like card, but go buy a card. I think I like that's, that. I think I like that too. I think that's interesting because- Good challenge. Gary V and overrated, underrated said Pokemon is still underrated. And we talked but about- But I how, talked about how buying those boxes and not opening them. Right, because, that would be sealed wax. Be, sealed so wax. sealed wax, because what I was thinking is like you open that and it was like a like the little there were it was like a Pokemon like lunchbox that has yeah, metal, right. whatever like five six packs of cards in there mm. you know whatever and I was like well you'd open that up and it's like twenty dollars could go to zero dollars or you keep you it sealed it and up. never open and it's like now you always have that what if like you said or, ten years down the road who knows what characters uh, I mean, Pokemon was cool ex I mean, explode off of that but I like mean, that's the investment and gambling side of it as well for sure for taking sure. that chance for sure but I feel like keeping it in the sealed wax kind of always maintains that value, especially if, because Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, right. all the sports cards are going to go through another crazy mania again, even For though sure. we haven't crashed from it now, but For eventually sure. it'll go up again. And I this, you know, I guess it was a side conversation, but thank you for listening. Yeah. Um, yeah, as always, you know, leave a review at the bottom, whether you liked it, whether you didn't, you know, some topics you want us to talk about, but as always, appreciate you listening and uh, uh, peace out. Yeah, appreciate it, guys. Hey, check out Cards from the Basement, TikTok, Instagram, oh, yeah. YouTube. I forgot to plug them. Yeah, yeah. Plug your, plug your yeah. stuff. Yeah, check, yeah, check hey, them out on YouTube. Yeah, any, check me out. YouTube, Instagram, uh, TikTok, Cards from the Basement. Like, follow, subscribe. Bro. Let me know what cards uh, you bought. Definitely go subscribe. Ask Great content. And if you've got any questions, ask Tip. He'll respond to you. For so. sure. For sure. All right, peace out, everyone. Thank you. Appreciate it. I never should be recorded a bank loan. <laughs> Ow now brown cow. Here we go. Scotch, scotch, scotch. I love scotch. The deep cuts, the dark lane demo tapes. I never had
to tell my dogs that we on roof for greatness. They pay for getters, they want money more than they want fake shit. I swear we go so hard, we on A-list. I see my niggas prevailing. We going hard for the hand, we gonna stack till we jaded. I just told my niggas that we on a mission. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's gonna be hard to get it. We too on par for the misses. I put my heart on my feelings. On tracks I don't even feel. We bought a box, we drip. Prove these niggas wrong that said I won't make the show. We had them bitches sold it high and niggas sold it hello. I sold them packs to get them racks, shit. I was stuck on my lows. And now I'm trying to get up. I told them niggas what's up. And now I'm singing, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you gon' go, then go, don't tell me you won't.